Hello, Jonathan Rayo here with Simplified Guitar, and in this lesson, I want to teach you how to play the song Speechless from Disney's Aladdin. As always, I'm going to play through the song for you first, and then afterwards, I'll break it down and explain it to you in more detail. So make sure to stick around for that. For now, let's go ahead and play through the song. <laughs> to wash me away Tide that is taking me under Swallowing sand left with nothing to say My voice drowned out in the thunder But I won't cry And I won't stop to crumble Whatever they try To shut me Cut me down I won't be silent You can't keep me quiet You tremble when you try it All I know is I won't go speechless Cause I'll breathe They try to suffocate me Stone every rule, every word, centuries old and unbending. Stay in your place, better seen and not heard. Now that story is ending. Cause I cannot start to crumble. So come and try, try to shut me and cut me. broken wings and watch me burn across the sky hear the echo say that I won't be silenced Do you want to see me tremble when you try it all I know is I won't go speechless speechless Try to suffocate me Don't you underestimate me Cause I know that I won't go speechless Yes, I know that I won't go speechless Speechless All right, so for this song, we're going to be playing in the G chord family and we're going to be using seven chords. So we're going to start off with the E minor 7, which is going to look like this. Um, I've got my first and second finger both on the second fret of the A and D string, and then my third and fourth finger are going to stay on the third fret of the B and high E string almost for the entire song. These two fingers are going to stay here for every single chord except for the B7 chord. So uh, that's going to make transitioning a little easier. Now for this E minor 7, what I want to do is strum all six strings for this chord. The next chord is going to be a C add 9 chord, and to get there from this E minor 7, all I need to do is pick up these two fingers, because these are going to stay there. I'm going to pick up these two fingers. I'm going to move my first finger down a string, and my second finger up a string and across a fret. So it's going to now be on the third fret. So this is my C add 9 chord. And for this chord, I want to make sure not to strum that low E string. So I'm going to let my thumb just touch it and mute it so it's not resonating. And I'm going to strum the bottom five.
Right, the next chord is going to be the D over F sharp chord, and for that one, my first finger is going to come up to the second fret of the low E string. My second finger is going to go down to the second fret of the G string, and this is my D over F sharp chord, and for this one, I want to strum all six strings as well. For those of you who have trouble with the D over F sharp, you can play the traditional D major chord, which looks like this. The reason I teach the D over F sharp is in the G chord family is because of the ease of transition, because it has a similar shape to all the other chords in the family. So it makes transitioning a lot easier. But if you're completely uncomfortable with it, you can always play the D major, the traditional D major, if you'd like. So the next chord is going to be the G major chord, or the, just the G chord. So to get there from the D over F sharp, I'm going to take my first finger and move it down a string. Second finger is going to go up to the third fret of the low E string. And that's going to be my G chord, and I want to strum all six strings for this one. Now, for now, I'm going to skip the B7. Uh, I'll explain that one in just a second. I want to go to the next two chords, which is going to be a B minor 7. Uh, to get to that B minor 7, I'm going to leave my first finger here, where it is on the G. I'm going to take my second finger and pick it up, and I'm going to move it down to the second fret of the G string. And this is going to be my B minor 7. It's a bit of a funky B minor 7, but it fits very nicely in the G chord family. The problem is, I want to make sure that I'm not strumming the low E string or the D string. So these two strings that are not being pressed down, they should be muted. Now, the E string is easy to mute because I can just mute it with my thumb. That's fine. But this one right here in the middle uh, is a little difficult to not resonate, right? Because it's right there in the middle. I can't not strum it. So what I want to do is, while my first finger is pressing down on the second fret of the A string, I want to let it lay on top of that D string, so that the pad of my first finger is just touching that D string so it's muted. So if, you know, if I hit it, it's not resonating or making any noise, okay? So when I strum this full, you know, and if I do a full strum, you're not even going to hear the muted strings. You'll just hear the ones that are resonating. Okay, we're also going to have an A minor 7 chord, and to get there, I'm going to put my first finger on the first fret of the B string, second finger, second fret of the D string, and this pinky is optional. You can keep it here on the third fret of the high E string, or you can remove it and just play your A minor 7 like this with two fingers. Now, you might be wondering why in the world would I even have this as an option if, if, if this is going to be so much easier just to use two fingers. Well, if you keep your pinky down right here, on this third fret of the high E string, it's going to make your transitions a lot easier. Even though it's a little bit more of a difficult chord to get used to, your transitions are going to be so much easier uh, to get out of this A minor 7 and to go to another chord within the song. So in the case of this song, after we play the A minor 7, we go to a B minor 7. And to get there from here, we need to do this. This is going to be our B minor 7. Okay. So if you notice, if I keep my pinky down, it's already down, and that's one less finger I have to worry about moving. I've only got to move these three fingers, okay? So this pinky kind of acts like a little anchor, you know, so it's in place already, so it kind of gives me a point of reference when I pick the other fingers up. It's easier to put the rest of my fingers down, as opposed to letting go, and I've got no point of reference, you know, if I've got nothing down when I go to switch, it's going to be just a little bit more complicated for your transitions. So again, it's up to you. You pick your battles. If you want to have a slightly more difficult chord but easier transitions, or an easier chord and more difficult transitions. Now let's go to the B7 chord. Now the B7 chord doesn't usually show up in the G chord family, but in this case it does. So let, let me just give you the G chord again. So if we're coming from the G chord, in order to get to the B7, what we're going to do is we're going to put our first finger on the first fret of the D string, second finger, second fret of the A string, third finger, second fret of the G string. So this is going to be our B7 chord. Now it's very important for the B7 chord, this version of the B7, that we do not strum that low E string. If you strum it, it's going to be very muddy and it's not going to be very clear what you're playing. It needs to be this string right here, that A string, which is playing your B note, needs to be very clear. It needs to be the first note that you play when you're strumming this chord. So it's very important that you mute that low E string and start your strumming on the A string. 
All right, for strumming, we're gonna be using the driving pattern, which is a nice, simple four beat strum pattern. We're gonna have four down strums with an up strum added after beat four, and then we're gonna repeat. We wanna make sure to put our emphasis on beat one and three, so that's every other beat we wanna strum harder. We also wanna strum softer on beat two and four. Now, sometimes I like to not strum beat two. My hand will still move down for beat two, but I won't let my pick hit the strings. Uh, and that's just to create more dynamics. Dynamics are a great way to add some complexity to a song rather than it being so monotonous. You know, you don't want to strum at the same intensity for every single beat. It's going to sound very boring. So a great way to do that is add dynamics to strum some beats softer and some beats harder. So what I'll do right now is hold the G chord and I'm just going to play that strum pattern slowly for you so you can hear what I'm doing. One, two, three, four, and 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 one. Now this song has some chords in it that are only going to be lasting for half a measure. And I want to explain that a little bit because it can be slightly complicated. But uh, so let's say our strum pattern that I just played, that those four beats, okay, that's going to be your measure. That's going to be one measure because this song is in 4-4 four, four time. It's four beats per measure. So our driving pattern equals one measure. So if a song is going to be lasting for half of a measure, it's only going to be lasting for two beats or half of your strum pattern. And that actually happens for like the first six chords of the verse. Each one of the chords is only going to be lasting for half of a measure. So that means that I'm going to play that E minor 7 for two beats, and then I'm going to switch from there to the C add 9 and play that C add 9 for two beats, and then I'm going to switch from the C add 9 to the D over F sharp. And so I want to play that progression slowly while I'm counting out the beats so that you can see where those transitions are happening. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four 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 and one. Okay, so that was the progression for the verse with me counting out the beats. And as you can see, there's a lot of chords in the verse that are only lasting for half a measure and then all of a sudden at the end of the stanza we throw in a chord that lasts for a full measure. So you just need to pay attention to that and know that it's there. If you need, of course you can practice it like I just did. Just play the chords and count the beats out loud so that you can get used to those progressions. Alright, I hope you found this lesson useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next lesson. Take care.